Hey guys, today's video is all about concrete curing, its different methods, techniques, and why it is so important. Concrete curing is the process of maintaining adequate moisture in concrete within a proper temperature range in order to aid cement hydration at early ages. Hydration is the chemical reaction between cement and water that results in the formation of various chemicals contributing to setting and hardening. The hydration process is affected by the initial concrete temperature, the ambient air temperature, the dimensions of the concrete, and mix design. Therefore, for this process to progress well, in situ concrete must have sufficient moisture and a temperature that favors this chemical reaction at a rapid and continuous rate. The American Concrete Institute recommends a minimum curing period corresponding to attaining 70% of the compressive strength of concrete. It is often specified that this can be achieved after 7 days of curing. However, 70% strength can be reached quicker when concrete cures at higher temperature or when certain admixtures are used in the concrete mix. Similarly, more time may be needed for curing when concrete or ambient temperatures are lower. Typically, 20 degrees Celsius is considered an ideal curing temperature. Freshly mixed concrete normally contains more water than is required for hydration of the cement, however, excessive loss of water by evaporation can delay or prevent adequate hydration, especially in the surface of the slab. These techniques for retaining moisture of in situ concrete are therefore important for proper hydration, so that concrete can gain sufficient compressive strength. Curing directly influences the quality of your overall structure. Strength gain is rapid at early stage, but continues more slowly for an indefinite period. Proper curing will increase durability, strength, water tightness, abrasion resistance, volume stability, and resistance to freezing and thawing. Careful control of moisture and temperature of your in-situ concrete during curing is an essential part of quality control and quality assurance of your concrete structure. Proper curing techniques will prevent in-situ concrete from drying, shrinking, and or cracking and ultimately affecting the performance of your structure, particularly at the cover zone. Curing of concrete should occur as soon as it has been placed. It is also essential that continuous monitoring of concrete curing conditions be carried out for seven days. If water evaporates from the concrete before it has attained its maximum strength, there will not be enough water remaining in the concrete to fully hydrate the cement and achieve maximum compressive strength. This is especially true during extreme weather conditions, when your concrete slab is subjected to various environmental elements and strength development of your concrete can be compromised. many factors affect the rate at which water evaporates from freshly placed concrete. This includes air temperature, humidity, concrete temperature, and wind speed. As a result, many techniques have been developed to help concrete retain moisture at the early ages. These methods are used to maintain the presence of water in the concrete during the early hardening period, reduce the loss of water from the surface of the concrete, and accelerate concrete strength gain by supplying heat and additional moisture. The method or combination of methods chosen depends on factors such as availability of curing materials, size, shape, and age of concrete, production facilities, in place or in a plant, aesthetic appearance, and economics. As a result, curing often involves a series of procedures used at a particular time as the concrete ages. The timing of each procedure depends on the degree of hardening of the concrete needed to prevent the procedure from damaging the concrete surface. Different Methods, Techniques of Concrete Curing Ponding is typically used to cure flat surfaces, such as pavements and floors, as earth and sand around the perimeter of the concrete surface can retain a pond of water. Ponding is an ideal method for preventing loss of moisture from the concrete. It is also effective for maintaining a uniform temperature throughout the concrete. Spraying and fogging are used when the ambient temperatures are well above freezing and the humidity is low. 
Fog mist is applied through nozzles or sprayers to raise the relative humidity of the air over flatwork, thus slowing evaporation from the surface. Fogging is used to minimize plastic shrinkage cracking. If sprinkling is done at intervals, the concrete must be prevented from drying between applications of water by using burlap or similar materials. Otherwise, alternate cycles of wetting and drying can cause surface cracking. Wet coverings saturated with water, such as burlap, cotton mats, rugs, or other moisture-retaining fabrics, are commonly used for curing. The materials should be placed as soon as the concrete has hardened enough to prevent surface damage. They should be kept constantly wet so that a film of water remains on the concrete surface throughout the curing period. Impervious paper and plastic sheets can be applied on thoroughly wet concrete, such as polyethylene film, to control moisture loss. Membrane-forming curing compounds are used to retard or reduce evaporation of moisture from concrete. They can be clear or translucent and white pigmented. White pigmented compounds are recommended for hot and sunny weather conditions to reflect solar radiation. Live steam and high-pressure steam are the two methods of steam curing. The temperature for live steam should be kept at about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, or less until the desired concrete strength is achieved. That's all for today guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe us.